Natalia Fatal is one of the earliest dolls in Integrity Toys fashion royalty lineup. Not quite at the outset of the launch of the line in 2001, when Veronique Perrin and Adele Makita first appeared. Natalia arrived in 2004, joining the other two dolls, and became a firm favorite with many collectors. Here's an initial look at the faces of Natalia. You'll see that she has undergone some transformation since her inception. Keep watching to find out more about this fascinating character. The story of fashion royalty is set in the highly competitive and cutting-edge worlds of cosmetics, fashion, and marketing. Initially, the story involved two cosmetic firms, viciously competing in a struggle to gain leadership in the European market, and eventually becoming a race for complete domination in the world of fashion as well. Welcome to the universe of W Cosmetics, and its ruthless rival, Missima. Natalia Fatal was born in Puerto Rico. From her earliest years she set her hopes on making it big in the world of fashion. Social climbing was second nature to her, and at an alarmingly young age, she married a womanizer just because he appeared to have the right connections. But the gigolo proved to be useless in this regard. In the meantime, she had been watching Perry Marino, the CEO of Missima, an insignificant cosmetic company. Perry was in the market of peddling cheap cosmetics to women all over the world. Seeing an opportunity, Natalia ditched the womanizer and married the CEO. It quickly became apparent that her new husband, 20 years her senior, was determined to keep all the money to himself. Natalia's ambitions, however, were much bigger than her husband's. She understood that to make it big at Missima, she would have to play hard, but do it quietly. Over the years, she secretly bought more and more stock, convinced that her irresponsible husband knew nothing about her actions. She was mistaken. The vengeful Marino waited until she had revamped the entire company and had made the brand a household name. Then in a boardroom coup, Natalia was unceremoniously ousted. Perry Marino's treachery and deception were a match to his wife's, he got a stronger, more successful company, without having to deal with Natalia any longer. What's more, he traded the wife in for a younger model. Natalia, naturally, was furious. Veronique Perrin knew very little about La Fatale and certainly didn't understand why she had so much animosity towards her, her company, and her family. Veronique tried to propose joint ventures on several occasions, but Natalia literally laughed at her. All Veronique knew was that Natalia was a top troublemaker, and that she was glad to be rid of her. Although Veronique wondered about the true reasons why she was so abruptly dismissed from Missima. Over her years at Missima, Natalia Fatale formed many alliances with the models under her wing, but especially supermodel Curie Sato, who managed to fool Natalia into giving her more and more power, only to turn on her the minute the going got rough. When Natalia was escorted from the building by security the day she was fired, no one, not even the one she thought was her strongest ally, stood by her. One thing is for sure, Natalia loved to stir up trouble and attract all the attention she could, come what may. Natalia was truly jealous of the Perrin family because of the one thing she would never be able to have, no matter how much money she amassed. Royal status. What's more, her total lack of business ethics, poise, and dignity, made her the black sheep of Parisian society, and other socialites tolerated her only because she had become insanely rich, and could buy and sell them all in the blink of an eye. Those days are certainly gone. Last we checked, Natalia La Fatale left France for an unknown destination, a few hours after she was fired. Perhaps one day we'll get to find out how someone as cunning as she, was so easily defeated by a ruthless businessman, a man she thought she had purged from her life, her husband. The launch doll marked the ultimately doomed attempt by Natalia to take control of her husband's company. Sumptuously dressed in rich lady satins and furs, La Fatale looks every inch the empire mogul. Even a captain of industry needs a little downtime, Natalia is resort ready, although a private island is more likely than consorting with the masses. Back in her natural environment, separated from the hoi polloi by a velvet rope, Natalia attends a premiere in a gravity-defying gown. To pay tape anyone? How many vacations can one doll take? She's back by the sea in a skimpy bikini, espadrille, and coral necklace combo. The chances of her actually getting wet are remote. A prototype gift set looks a winner. Another of Natalia's favorite spots, the photographer's studio. Hair, makeup, lights, and action. Hold that pose, this is turning into a rather long shoot. 
Natalia gets wiggy in the modern pompadour collection. We love a wig doll. As of December 2006, Natalia, as versions 1 and 1.5, was the first retired fashion royalty character. Nobody knew exactly where Natalia Fatal disappeared to, but there were rumors about what she'd done while she was away. She definitely didn't look quite the same as before, when she reappeared in 2008. Cher meets Cleopatra, via a detour at Morticia Adams' place. Natalia's reappearance is anything other than low-key. Past the 3D spectacles. Shapeshifter Natalia focuses on day, evening, and boudoir, in this glamorous gift set. The stitches are out and she's rocking her new look. As if you needed reminding, this doll's default position is boss lady. Don't mess with me fellas. Even in a simple gray shift, Natalia looks a million dollars. Prepare for takeoff and launch the boosters. The future really does look perfect. Goodness knows how many strings Natalia had to pull, to appear in this sci-fi extravaganza. Why settle for one look when you can have three? The demure baby blue is offset by power dressing and tweed. From lady at lunch to boardroom, plus some saucy bedroom antics. The Foundation Collection of 2010, brought us Natalia as private goddess. The gown did not win universal acclaim, but the doll herself works hard to carry it off. Old style Natalia was brought back for the 2011 Jet Set Convention. Scantily clad in black undies with contrast platinum hair. High drama with the old Natalia sculpt again. This time she's channeling an haute couture Wicked Witch of the West. I'll get you my pretty, and your little dog too. Watch out Glinda. The 2.0 sculpt is back. Thank goodness all that cosmetic work didn't go to waste. The 2012 style directive doll is pretty in pink, with a little contrast green. Natalia is looking deceptively demure, but don't be fooled by appearances. For the Tropicalia convention, Natalia decided to wear a shapeless jacket, over an unflattering skirt and top combo. Looks like the blowout was overlooked too, going instead for a crinkly look. The stylist was sacked immediately after the photos were published. A little bit Ursula Andress, Natalia brings the Grecian goddess vibe bang up to date. Bellissima indeed, Rita Hayworth meets Jessica Rabbit. The only redhead Natalia thus far. Oh, that old sculpt is back again. Serving pouty McPout face, and giving the scion of sour Agnes von Weiss, a run for her money. Those black side panels will flatter any figure. A beautiful Natalia, appearing with her natural coloring, at the gloss convention. Back to the 70s in a Halston-inspired cape and dress. Minimal line, high elegance. For the Urban Safari collection, the core fashion royalty dolls all appeared in a series of outfits that had many mix and match possibilities, with plenty of great accessories. The high-heeled boots are ideal for hiking through the woodlands of the savannas. Inner Spark was one of the most popular dolls of the cinematic convention. Natalia is at her best, in an opulent black gown with embroidered ton sur ton overlay, and silver jewelry.
Dramatic smoky eyes with pale lips add to the impact. A stunner. Back to the very first Natalia sculpt, with a glimpse of teeth. This basic evening wear doll was presented to attendees, at the convention's welcome cocktail party. For 2015's fashion royalty collection, Jason Wu wanted the design team to use ladies who lunch as an inspiration, channeling rich socialites of the 60s, elegantly dressed in spare clean lines. The collection included restrained, minimal daywear, with a retro vibe. Natalia wears a sophisticated tweed, cocoon sleeve, crop jacket and pencil skirt suit. This chic look is pulled together with a crewneck bodysuit, a taupe straw cloche style hat, and a pop of color from the fuchsia faux leather purse and matching pumps. Contrasting proposition Natalia was one of the most popular dolls in the 2016 collection. She wears a high contrast beaded cocktail dress with a lace overlay. She completes her look with highly textured accessories, a faux fur covered clutch purse, chunky golden jewelry, and ribbon lace patent leather pumps. Here's a blonde Natalia from the supermodel convention of 2016. Her outfit is clearly heavily inspired by Versace's bondage collection, made famous in the UK by Liz Hurley. Here's the actual red dress, modeled in a press ad by Christy Turlington, and unexpectedly teamed up with a silk puffer jacket. A great homage in miniature, and all the accessories are very Versace too. Typecast again. Natalia appears once more as the Wicked Witch of the West, this time with her most up-to-date face sculpt. Ballroom ready, with a daringly plunging neckline that Margaret Hamilton would have disapproved of. Shades of Ivana Trump via Absolutely Fabulous, Sweetie. Great jacket, not sure about the pink gift trap ribbon. Resurgence is another look designed by Jesse Ayala, inspired in part by Meryl Streep as Miranda Priestley, from The Devil Wears Prada, although there might be a little Victoria Beckham in there too. Since they became friends again, Natalia Fatale has appeared in a few of Veronique Perrin's high-profile campaigns, much to the disappointment of Perry Marino, her ex-husband and rival at Missima Cosmetics. For her latest collab with her new pal Vero, Nat has decided that it would be best if she represented the company's latest ultra-sheet finishing powder. Because as we all know, Natalia loves gold, and this perfectly shaped little makeup compact complements her shining personality to a T. Make Me Blush was only available through a W Club lottery. Designed by Jesse Ayala, with Xenia, Natalia and Jordan as his models. For this shoot, Integrity picked Ahmet Steltman to photograph the dolls, and the difference it makes clearly shows. La Flor was a one-of-a-kind doll created especially for the Live from Fashion Week convention lottery. One lucky winner got a doll that wears a Molly Goddard-inspired dress, as famously worn by Jodie Comer, playing Villanelle in Killing Eve.
In Enamorada, Natalia Fatal shares her softer side with her fans in this fantastic mini gift set, that turns up the glam to a new level of fierceness. Composed of everything our lady will need, to go from a fashionable evening on the red carpet, to a romantic evening with her new beau. Truly classic fashion royalty couture at its best, created by designer Jesse Ayala. For the legendary convention of 2020, an event that was held virtually, the Style Lab version of Natalia went back to her launch sculpt, complete with painted and teeth. This new doll was paired with a dress inspired by 2004's launch doll, Cosmetic Takeover, and designed by Alain Tremblay. The fashion royalty dolls for the Obsession convention were designed by Jesse Ayala, who chose to be obsessed by military styling for this collection. Natalia was perhaps more police force than armed forces. The two-tone inspiration was from Alexander McQueen, although it was unclear what the accessory hanging from the bag was meant to be. Dog poop bags? Mini taser? Or donut holder? Best friend, probably her accountant. Foe, every other FR character. Love interest, money and power. Mentor and personal guide, herself. Loves, to be talked about and, well, money. Hates, anything that has to do with the parent family, and two-faced people, like Curie Sato. Disappearance, mysteriously, after the Miami collection in December 2006.